Hey friends, it's Melanie with Melanie's Dance, and today I dare you to come and dance with us. We are playing with Dancing Halloween by Spellbinders. This is the Day of the Dead Boy and Girl die sets from that collection, and I have made two cards, or am making two cards, with this Boy and Girl die sets. And instead of being spooky Halloween cards, we are dancing and celebrating. So we are using the embossing folder from the May 2023 club kit called Balloons and Banners. And I'm just having a celebration and a party with these little guys. They are adorable. I have never used the dancing features or die sets from Spellbinders before. This was a first for me. And I had a blast. <laughs> I've used these little gems to decorate her. And I just thought this was the cutest thing ever. This whole concept of dancing. So we are going to make the second one. And we're going to jazz it up just a little bit by using the oval die set. And we're using those Celebrate Glimmer hot foil plates. And I'll link all of this down below if you're interested in anything. I'm going to use the Versacolor ink pad here and I'm just going to lightly brush it along the embossing folder. And this is just going to highlight the balloons. And when I looked up Day of the Dead on the internet, I was not familiar with the actual holiday or celebration once a year that um, is is celebrated from the Day of the Dead celebration. So I got all of my inspiration from the photographs that I saw online. And my husband actually said, you should do something with, with black and white. And of course, you know, everything online is black and white and colorful. And I learned so much looking up everything online. And I just thought it was neat and I just wanted to celebrate with everybody, celebrate your past ancestors, and um, just have fun with this collection. So that's what I've done. And with my die cuts, I have doubled up all of the die cuts. So I've used two of every die cut. And this just gives your die cut pieces extra body, extra thickness. It makes them stronger, and they're going to hold up better, especially with your moving parts and everything. I have used these slim ovals right here to, I used two of them to create this little frame. And I'm going to use this very gently or very carefully with the, um, the Barely Art glue there. I'm going to tap off a little excess of the glue there on my hand because I don't want it to squid, you know, squeeze out on the vellum. But I'm using a piece of vellum just kind of to keep that that ghostly shadow feeling, you, you, you know, on the background. And I'm gonna lay this down, and what we're gonna do is give this little Day of the Dead boy a background. I felt, these are five by seven cards, and so I felt with the first card when I made her, it had a little too much space around her, so I thought, okay, let's show another way to do the second card. We'll jazz it up and step it up just a little bit and we'll fill that space. Now you could see through the vellum. So I went ahead and put a piece of the blue cardstock behind the vellum and that gave it a little blue hue behind the vellum, which I thought looked really good with our boy. So see, see all the, all the extra space. Now we have a little extra frame there. It fills in that extra blank space behind the, the girl where it had that open blank space. This covers that up and it shows more of just the celebration balloons behind it. Now there is another dice or there is another 3D folder online that is available that is just balloons. There's no banners. It's just the small balloons and it covers the entire embossing area and you don't have that open section in the center. So if you don't like that open section, that is another possibility for this card, and it might be something you already have in your stash. So that's you know a possibility also. So now we're gonna build our little dude, 
and I have already doubled up all of my pieces here. So like that red rim of the hat, that is two red rims glued together. This is two of the white faces glued together. Um, I've done doubled up everything. So I'm just showing you the last bit or like if you were just doing one layer of the die cuts, this is what you would be doing. For, I was just showing you the back of the head there. I had placed in the nose, the heart for the nose, and I had placed that red piece behind that decoration on his head. See, I was showing you the double layers, how thick that is. It makes it really, really sturdy, and that's why I was flicking it with my finger. It's real tough, it's real sturdy. Now these are the little accents that go on his forehead. And they're just so cute once you put them on. And when you're using these type of die cuts, when you're building these characters or flowers, your double or your reverse tweezers that I'm using there, those are from the Susan's Garden um, toolkit, but you can actually buy them separately. And those are your best friends. So it, it gives you a third pair of hands. So if it's something that you don't have or currently use, get yourself a pair of the um, reverse tweezers because it's, it's pretty affordable and it's something that you will use, believe me, over and over and over again if you like this style of card where you're building and use it, you know, this and also like your, your pick tool with your, where you can pick up little tiny pieces and build with. Now, funny little story here. I'm building the shirt and the shirt has this little collar and then it has the two hands that go on it. Well, Melanie didn't know, so consider this user error, but this right hand that I'm putting on him goes on first and I'm, I'm calling it right hand because it's his right hand. It's actually on your left side, but it's his right hand. So that one goes on. Well, when you're making this and crafting with me, do not place the left hand on, okay? The guitar goes in his hand first, and then you put the left hand on. So that's why I'm, I'm writing that at the bottom there. We need to put the guitar on first, and I'll show you why here in a minute when I fix my boo-boo. But we need to put the guitar in first, and then the die itself actually shows you there on the neck of the guitar. It actually has a break in the strings of the guitar where the hand is to be placed. Spellbinders is ingenious. Let me tell you where they leave this area. It's like this little road map of where these dies go. But I was just going with the flow and not paying attention, of course. So let my boo-boo be your helper and your aid because don't do as I did and make a mistake. Luckily, I had doubled up on my paper and when I go to fix it, only the top layer of my paper came off, so I'm able to fix my mistake relatively easily, and you'll be able to see that here in just a second. But um, that's the nice thing about these videos, is when you get the product home, if you happen to be crafting along with me, I can stop you from making your errors. So I can save you in paper. <laughs> I can help you not make mistakes. So we're all human, guys. You know, it, it's like it is what it is. But you see, that hand needs to actually go over the neck. And this is where I realize there's a problem. So I need to pull up that white paper. And yeah, see, that goes on top of there. So I'm going to pull up. And luckily, like I said, I had two layers of paper there. So I just pulled up the first piece and it, it, luckily, it broke in half pretty easily for me. And I was able to glue that. And here I'm showing you, see that blank space where the strings are etched in and then it's blank? That was Spellbinder's little teaching area to tell us, hey guys, that's where the glue goes. That's where the hand goes. You know, they have it all worked out for us. We just need to pay attention. <laughs> 
So, you know, live and learn. I'll look a little more closely next time I'm building one of these. But, you know, it's it's ingenious the way they make these things. I just, I'm impressed more and more the more I work with these products. I'm just in love the more and more I play. So I do get it fixed in all is well. And I just love it. Just getting a little bit of the glue off. Just a little bit oozing out and I'm just cleaning it up. <laughs> so, so cute. So I'm getting, I had a little bit of adhesive. So I'm just using a little tiny adhesive eraser and just getting rid of a little of that excess adhesive. Um, those little adhesive erasers are miracle workers. So there we go. All fixed. Look how thick and sturdy that is with all that, those die cut pieces. And then that is going to hook right there. See that? That's a glue area. That's why that looks funny because that's his glue spot. And that's just going to hook on right there. And we have a body. Yep. So I'm going to hold that just a little bit. And then that circle is the part that's going to dance for us. So I'm just holding that extra tight just to make sure that glue sets really, really well because we want to make sure that connection is well. And now I need to see where the placement of the um, foam squares is going to be. And I notice where the yellow part of the guitar is on the back there is a little lower than the blue area on the back there. And I want to make sure my foam squares sit really sturdy. So I'm just cutting a little piece of a double layer of um, cardstock there just to fit in that empty space. This is just me trying to make it as sturdy as possible. There's no rules here, but it's just me being me. And I'm just going to put this extra piece in here and glue it really well. And it's just going to make this more flat and even level. And that way, when I put the foam squares in this circle, yep, his legs are going to swing. See, there's absolutely no glue that is going to be attached to the legs themselves. There's just going to be two little foam squares stacked on top of each other right here where I'm gluing on, the, on his back. Nothing is going to be glued to the legs. The only thing that's going to attach to the background or to the card base is the top section of his body. So I'm going to add some foam dots to his head, his hat head area. And then I've got two foam dots, the mini foam dots, in two on top of each other right there. And then we're going to, I'm going just for security purposes, I'm going to add a little bit of the liquid glue. And this is just to give it extra strength is my main reason here. Just because this is a large piece that's holding up everything. So here there's no glue. That's what I'm showing you here. There's absolutely no glue on his dancing parts. That's going to go down there. And that's it, folks. That's as easy as it gets. And that way his legs swing. And we're dancing, baby. That is easy as it gets. Now I have got these two sentiments here. They both say celebrate. And I also have a hot pink one that is reverse foiled that I made. And I think I like that one better for her. Now... On her, she had a little extra glue showing there up in her arm area that I didn't care for. So I went ahead and used the sentiment to cover it up. So, hey, there's always a way to fix your boo-boos, you know? So I went ahead and it kind of looks like she's holding the little banner while she's playing the maracas. So I thought that was super cute and, and that reverse foiling came out really, really good. And that just gave her a little punch, a little extra, extra. So there's my cards. Hope you like them. <laughs>